Welcome to Movie Recall. In today's video, we'll be going through the 2022 thriller film Shattered. It's time to recall. Let's get started. Turn on subtitles and spoilers ahead. Young and wealthy businessman Chris Decker is having a video call with his beautiful wife Jamie regarding his signature for the divorce papers she asked him to sign. The two are about to split up, but Chris is starting to have second thoughts about his divorce, so he says he could have fought harder to keep his family. Unfortunately, Jamie just encourages him to move on now. After their conversation, Jamie tucks her daughter Willow in bed while the child expresses how much she misses her dad. Jamie can only comfort her by telling her how much she loves her husband, too. Chris drives through the pouring rain in a local convenience store to shop for some ice cream. There, he notices a beautiful woman named Skye who asks him for his opinion on the wine she's about to purchase. She explains that she's had a rough day, so Chris recommends her a bottle of Nebbiolo. The two introduce themselves to each other, and with that, she leaves. Outside the convenience store, Chris sees Skye again as her Uber got cancelled, so he offers her a free ride to her apartment. There, she explains that she got into a fight with her roommate and that she didn't want to spend the night with her, so he offers to take her to his house. The apartment owner, Ronald, observes her without being noticed from his house window, and he watches as Chris takes Skye in his car. The sheer luxury of Chris's home amazes Skye, and she believes that it belongs to his parents, but Chris says that the whole property is his. He's retired from making security software applications, and that evidently made him a very pretty buck. In contrast, Skye used to model in the past, but she later moved to the countryside to find something more fulfilling. Deeper into the night, the two of them drink by the fireplace and the intimacy between them is palpable. Chris and Skye lock lips with each other, and this quickly leads Skye moaning in bliss while racking Chris back and forth. The following morning, an alarm wakes Chris up to an empty bed while Skye arrives at her apartment. Ronald catches her attention, then mockingly spouts walk of shame, sensing what she had done. When she enters her apartment room, her roommate Lisa storms at her, worried sick because she didn't come home last night. Though Lisa's starting to go on about kicking her out of the apartment, Skye just brushes her off and enters the bedroom, closing the door. While Lisa begs her to open it and talk to her, Skye just lies in bed as her thoughts drift elsewhere. On the other hand, Chris is reminiscing the moments he shared with his daughter Willow. He could even hear her giggling voice. During a night of loneliness, Chris visits a bar for a drink, and it just so happens that Skye is serving drinks there. She happily approaches him and the two of them talk, but Chris bluntly tells her that he only decided to see her because his wife wished for him to move on, catching her off guard. They continue their conversation even after Skye's shift is ended and she confesses that she lied about having a family. She was actually in a foster home and grew up with several families that tried to adopt her and she even calls herself damaged goods. Chris comforts her, explaining that his family was no good either. He became obsessed with security, which is one of the reasons behind he and his ex-wife's disputes. Suddenly, Chris gets interrupted when he sees a man named Kirju trying to steal his car. Chris tries to stop him, but their altercation ends with Kirju breaking his right leg with a crowbar and running off. The crime has left Chris in a wheelchair with his casted leg, and Skye takes him home the next morning. He struggles to carry himself to the couch since his private nurse is yet to arrive, so a very sympathetic Skye offers to take care of him. When Chris jokingly asks for her qualifications, she enticingly whispers that he could get it on with her before kissing him passionately. And so, Chris accepts her offer and cancels his appointment with his private nurse. He entrusts his home passcodes to her, and Skye leaves to retrieve her belongings from her home. Lisa waits for Skye's return in her apartment with Ronald watching her. He comments that she was doing good for herself before Skye came into her life, but Lisa tells him to shut up as Skye arrives, smirking at Ronald and saying he's just jealous. The two ignore Ronald and Skye walks inside the apartment room to pack up her things. Lisa cries, demanding an explanation from Skye. Instead, she asks her to sit with her in bed, and Skye kisses her lips, calming her down. A sleeping Chris is woken up by Skye's gentle voice, seducing him already. Chris kisses her lips and begs her for more, and they fill the remaining hours by spending the night together. Lying down in bed, Chris tells Skye that he loves her, and she responds that it's probably the drug's side effect. He asks her if she would feel the same way, but she confesses that she already loves him. Ronald bangs on Lisa's apartment door asking for the rent, but when he doesn't receive a response, he forces it open. To his utter shock, he finds Lisa's dead body with both her wrists slit in a bathtub filled with blood. Meanwhile, Skye's testing the face security scanner just as Chris was waking up. Detective Lane interviews Ronald regarding Lisa's death, suspecting that she was murdered. Ronald believes that she had killed herself after her lover, Skye, left her in such a depressed state. The detective isn't convinced, though, since he can't find any trace of a woman named Skye in their database. 
Their conversation is interrupted when the media arrives, but the detective gets upset with Ronald facing them only to blabber on about the apartment's history. Meanwhile, Jamie video calls Chris to follow up on their divorce papers, but he reasons that he can't do them right now. He shows his leg injury, so Jamie suggests having Willow visit him to cheer him up, and he agrees. But what surprises her more is learning that Chris has hired a private nurse for his leg since she knows full well that her ex-husband has trust issues. Chris then looks for Skye, who's currently taking a shower. With his curiosity and mistrust getting the better of him, he finds her bag and stoops around, eventually finding a photo of her with Lisa. But Skye would then catch him in the act, so Chris is left with no choice to admit to what he was doing, making her smile and say that she'd have done the same thing. She then throws her towel at him, making Chris dry her up, and they end up racking the bed back and forth with their wild, steamy hormone sandwich. At night, Skye enters Willow's old room, singing a lullaby and lying down to sleep. The following morning, Chris wakes up in a panic and frantically looks for his missing phone. He strolls around the house with his crutches to check his tablet, but the device isn't working. Then he sees that the television's on, reporting Lisa's mysterious passing with the question, murder or suicide, flashing. Chris instantly recognizes her as the girl from Sky's photo, but he gets distracted when she suddenly arrives, bringing him breakfast. After looking for his phone again, Chris mentions the news, saying that she should contact the cops. However, Sky would simply admit to murdering Lisa, and she gazes menacingly upon Chris while commenting on how the chicken tastes. Chris is understandably baffled, so Sky explains that Lisa was nosy and jealous. But since she had the apartment, Sky stayed with her to spy on Chris's house through a telescope. For the past two months, she's been doing her homework, studying him, and figuring out how to gain his trust. Chris is absolutely disheartened to learn this, and he shouts at Skye to get out of his property. Unmoved, Skye simply smiles at him, and when he tries to escape, she uses his phone to lock the doors and trap Chris there with her. He demands her to give his phone back, but Skye just tases him, making him fall to the floor. Unable to recover because of his injured leg, Chris gets tased again, and soon, he's knocked unconscious. Back at the apartment, Ronald is cleaning Lisa's room when he finds the telescope that Sky used to spy on Chris. He then spies on the other houses with it, and upon seeing a naked lady, he hurriedly grabs a chair to watch. Meanwhile, Sky ties Chris to a wheelchair and interrogates him about his security codes. He refuses to cooperate, however, so Sky kicks him to the floor and tortures him with an electric drill. After his little bit of voyeurism, Ronald moves the angle of the telescope and he ends up peeking at Sky getting dressed after torturing Chris. As for Skye, she's happily transferring Chris's money to her account. Morning comes with Chris in agonizing pain as Ronald watches. Skye fixes Chris up to make him look presentable for the bankers and brokers. She plans on liquidating his stocks to fund her own self-made company, but Chris isn't having any of that. He struggles to escape and even attempts to choke Skye, but she just stabs his chest with a pair of scissors. After threatening to hurt his family if he doesn't cooperate, she proceeds to take away all his gadgets, unplug every security wiring, then take pictures of his art collection. Later on, some people start to arrive and Chris gets hopeful, only to get crushed upon seeing Kirju. She then gives him a rundown on what they'll be selling from Chris's possessions. Sometime after, Ronald's secretly waiting in his car while Skye leaves the house. She made sure to leave Chris's mouth with duct tape, rendering his screams for help futile. Thinking that the coast is clear, Ronald breaks a window and enters Chris's home, where he finds him wounded and tied up to his wheelchair. At the same time, Skye catches Ronald on the security camera through Chris's phone. Ronald takes his sweet time criticizing Chris for being rich before removing the duct tape from his mouth. Chris begs him to call the cops, but because Ronald knows his priorities, he bribes Chris into giving him something valuable first. He desperately offers up his Picasso painting, so Ronald drops the bomb, admitting that he doesn't own a phone since it causes brain cancer. When Skye arrives, Ronald quickly grabs a knife to threaten Skye before running upstairs while holding the painting. Unfazed, Skye smiles ominously at Chris and faces him in the house monitor as she walks upstairs with a samurai blade. She gleefully monitors Ronald's movements through Chris's phone, and with Skye focused on the loon, Chris breaks free from his captivity. He hastily rides a snowmobile to the backdrop of Ronald's agonized voice while Skye repeatedly stabs him. However, Chris falls on the road and he almost gets hit by a car. The driver, Sebastian, helps a paranoid Chris get in his car and assures him that there is no woman following him. Sebastian dials the number, then calls the cops before handing it to him so he can explain his situation. But when the car reaches its destination, Chris is equal parts surprised and horrified to see that they just went back to his house. Sebastian knocks him unconscious, and a bloody sky welcomes him. They take him back inside with Sebastian mocking how pathetic Chris looked after believing he was saved. Sky leaves them alone, letting Sebastian introduce himself as Sky's stepfather. 
He goes on about how people like Chris get robbed by people like himself, and he even brags about how he nurtured and trained Sky's skills of deception. At this point, Sebastian's almost justifying what they're doing by saying that Chris didn't manage to get all his wealth on his own. He didn't get it all just by being smart because so many other people are smart. He points to the outside of Chris's house, emphasizing how he's up there all protected in his hill while the people he looks down on, the people below him, are looking up at him with hungry eyes. But Chris is unfazed, and with restraint, he asserts that he doesn't look down on anybody but Sebastian, that he can't twist this into some socio-political bullcrap because he and Skye are thieves and killers, nothing more. That night, Chris's heart breaks even further as he listens to the cacophony of Sky and Sebastian's moans while they roughly have their way with each other. Later on, Sky walks up to Chris, explaining that she had to feed the wolf, much to his disgust. She then starts showing something that's akin to pity, confessing that she'll miss the life she had with him, but Chris just retorts that everything she says are just lies, and he even questions if Sky's her real name. Still, he confesses that he genuinely loved her. He could have given all he had to her, she didn't have to take it. Sky retorts that he's a liar, and since she knows about the grand fortune he's hiding in the bank, she brings him to Sebastian. The money can only be accessed through his thumb mark, so they cut off his thumb, letting Chris's curdling screams end the night. As promised, Jamie arrives at Chris's house to drop Willow off. The girl quickly runs into her room, while Jamie looks around, perturbed by the mess. When she sees the bloodstains on the floor, she immediately orders Willow to come back, only for a very nonchalant Sky to waltz in with Willow in her arms. Jamie sternly demands that Skye let her daughter go, and as soon as she does, she asks where Chris is. Skye chirpily tells them to come back another time since he's still sleeping, spurring Jamie to threaten that she'll call the cops. The mother-daughter pair grows even more unsettled when Sebastian shows up, and soon they're locked in a room with an injured Chris, who cries upon reuniting with his daughter. Meanwhile, Sebastian ties Chris's severed thumb to his finger to enact their plan of getting the last of Mr. Millionaire's liquid assets. During the drive away from the house, Sebastian notices that something's up with Skye, but she dismisses his thoughts and encourages him to focus on getting the money. As for the trapped family, they finally figure out a way to escape by fitting Willow into the vent. At the bank, the thieves are met by a vault officer who tries to shake their hands. When it's time to scan Sebastian's finger, it actually works. Back in the house, Jamie's managed to open the vent, and she lets Willow loose so the child can crawl along to break free. Chris explains that his bearer bonds are the reason why he was robbed, much to Jamie's shock. She, in turn, admits that she had hidden his money out of fear that he wouldn't give her the financial support. Sebastian and Skye are tethering on Livid when they read Jamie's letter inside the deposit box. They hurriedly drive back to the house, and through the monitor, they can see that Willow's already escaped from captivity. Willow opens the security lock on the door, while Sebastian and Skye arrive at the house. They split up to search, and suddenly, Chris comes out of hiding. He surprises Sebastian and nearly hits him with his weapon, but Sebastian easily overpowers him. When Chris stumbles to the floor, Sebastian brutally beats him, and Skye holds him at gunpoint, demanding to know where Jamie is. Chris grimaces in pain while Sebastian keeps egging her to shoot him, but in her confusion and irritation, she points the gun at her stepfather, killing him instead. Despite his shock, Chris takes this opportunity to stab Skye on the shoulder before taking his phone and hiding from her. Skye removes the weapon from her shoulder and smiles amidst the pain. She grabs it along with her gun and continues her hunt for Chris inside his home. Chris uses his phone to distract her with loud orchestral music playing in the background, and he turns off the lights while monitoring her through his phone. Sky walks silently along the halls as Jamie and Willow hide in fear. Then the woman begins to taunt Chris and fires aimlessly at the loud noises she keeps hearing. Chris surprises Sky and tries to pin her down, only to get stabbed on the chest. He stumbles in pain, but before Sky can deal the finishing blow, Jamie goes to save him. The women engage in a struggle, with Skye eventually overpowering Jamie and injuring her feet. Chris manages to strike Skye's leg, immobilizing her for a brief moment, but she remains standing up, ready to stab the husband and wife. To everyone's surprise, Willow fires the gun and Skye drops to the ground. Though she's shocked beyond belief, Jamie wills herself to rush towards her daughter and embrace her. As Skye lays dying, she desperately tries to tell Chris something. Sirens can be heard, and Jamie quickly leaves with Willow. Chris is desperately crawling away from Skye when he hears her last words. Margaret. That's Skye's real name, and with a teardrop falling from her lifeless eyes, Skye had finally said an honest thing. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and click the bell icon to get new movie recaps.